Hey everybody, Clint here with CCUA. Welcome back to another one of our veg out videos. We're out here at a little fruit nursery with one of our employees, Adam Saunders. He's going to kind of tell us all about how fruit gets from uh, really just a seed or maybe in this case a cutting all the way back to our plate. And here we are. Hi everybody. Uh, happy to be on Veg Out to, today talking about apple trees and the process to grow apple trees. So we're here downtown Columbia looking at a stool bed. And so each of these little sprouts is a apple tree, uh, but not an apple tree that produces fruit, but a rootstock. And it is the base of a tree. This is a mark rootstock. It makes sure that the tree is short, a dwarf rootstock. So it only grows about as tall as I can reach, which is really convenient for picking. And so this production method, basically, um, I put this, the trees in here, I cut them off. Last year they sent up a bunch of sprouts, like an elm tree or any old apple tree, any old tree will, will do. Then I hilled up the dirt just yesterday, like you do around potatoes. And apples are unique that if there's dirt up against the stem, it will root. A lot like a tomato plant. And so you think of every one of these little sprouts is gonna root down in there below ground. I'll come back in the spring, pull the dirt back, and every one of these little sprouts, you can see all the way through here, is gonna be a rooted cutting. So it's a, basically a little baby apple tree that's got roots and the genetics that will make the tree short. And so there's about several hundred, maybe a thousand little cuttings in here that I'll be able to harvest next spring and propagate into a nursery. So across the street, we're gonna walk over and see what that nursery looks like. So we're gonna see two more things first. Here is what apple seeds look like when they germinate. This is a seedling. And so they're all different. They're these, some of this one is red. This one might produce red fruit. So there's a lot of different genetic diversity in these, in these apple seeds. And these will all make very, very, very large trees um and different quality fruit these came from several different varieties of apples um, that i i pressed with my friends at log boat and wave cider and i took all that pressing of all that apples and spread it in here and came up with hundreds and hundreds of little trees so i'll grow these up and move them and then one more thing to look at here before we go across the street these are rooted cuttings so this is a different root stock of apples. This is a much taller. This was just a cut of, of some prunings I did on Geneva 890, which is a pretty medium sized tree, uh, about 50% of a, how tall a, a seedling will be. And I cut them and I put them in the ground. I, I put some rooting hormone on them and I've kept them well watered to produce and they're staying alive. Further down are some pears that are not looking as good. Um, but these, like over there on the, the stool bed, when the apple is below ground, it'll root. These cuttings put in the ground want to survive and put out roots. So they're pretty weak right now. I've had to water them a lot, but they're doing really well. So let's walk across the street and look at what the nursery looks like. So after, I'll walk back with you. After we lift the rootstock out of the stool bed, we go to the nursery to space them out. They need elbow room. And then in that tight little spot of the stool bed, that's just about growing the rootstock. It's just about having the base of the tree. And then to move them out, I put them on a wider spacing so they have a little bit of elbow room and I can get in there and graft a known variety of fruit onto the rootstock. And that's the thing about every all apple trees that are in big orchards and commercial production are grafted. And that ensures that, sip on over Clint, that ensures that the fruit variety tastes the same every time. And so let's come on down here and show you um, what a grafted fruit tree looks like. Um, let's look at this one right here. And so this is the rootstock. This is last spring was just a little cutting that came out of a stool bed. And then in the summer, I came in with a, a sharp knife. I did a little bit of surgery and I put a single bud under the bark. And then this spring, 
this plant has sprouted up. And so this is a known variety. I've got a map, uh, so I know exactly what it is. And it, all of this sprout up to here is grown just this year. Um, and so this, by the end of the season, will be probably up to my hip or higher. And then what I'll be able to do is next spring in March, lift that tree and put it in an orchard. So if you look through here, there are hundreds and hundreds of little trees, um, all different varieties. I have about 107 different varieties of apple in my collection, about 30 varieties of pear, and about eight varieties of peaches that I've grown in this site. Some folks may recognize this site as the original CCUA demo garden. We're on the corner of Ash and St. Joseph Street. You can see Brookside on Walnut right there. Our neighbors that moved in a couple years ago. Um, but this is year 12 of this site. The garden we were just in, the St. Joseph Street Community Garden, is on year 13. And so back in the day when CCOA started, this was our first little spot. We outgrew it and moved due north to the urban farm, which is now the Veterans Urban Farm. Mark and Carol Stevenson own that property. They also own this property. Um, and have been gracious to let us grow gardens and now grow fruit trees on here. So, um, yeah, we're excited to to see these babies grow. Come on down, I'll show you a few more. So here's another one. And you can see this has got red leaves. And so this is a red field variety. I've got a little label on this one. Um, and so this one will make fruit that is red in the middle. This is a cider variety. And so it may not taste very good to eat, but if crushed and put into a fermentation, it will taste really good uh, as a hard cider variety. And make the fruit make the cider look a little bit red. Um, an important part of this process is picking off the varieties, the parts of the sprout that are not the graft. So you look at this one, there's the graft, and you look at these two other sprouts, I'm breaking those off because I want all the energy of this root to come up this sprout. Because if, if it does, a, if it grows out a big bushy, um, it, it puts out a bunch of sprouts, then it will spread the energy across multiple leaves. And I want all of it to go into one leaf. Uh, it's an important part of this process. So timeline, let's review. So we've got our stool bed, we grow up the rooted cuttings, we lift them in the spring, we set them out on this, in this row, and then what we'll do is the next summer, in August or September, I'll come in with a knife and I'll take a cutting of of a variety like a red field apple or a gala or any range of good tasting apple and I'll slide that little bud under the bark, wrap it with two rubber bands, give it a thumbs up and hope it grows in the spring. So now we're in the spring, all these, all of these have sprouted this spring um, and they're looking pretty good uh, for the most part. Um, to think that, the, that this little apple tree is going to live for you know, 30, 40 years and produce fruit every year. It's pretty awesome. It has a little bitty start as an itty bitty root cutting. Propagates out. You put the variety, a graft of known variety on top, then that grows up uh, and produces the fruit. So the rootstock determines how tall the tree is. Uh, we looked at Mark rootstock over there. It's a dwarf. Geneva 890 is another variety I have. And that grows a, a lot taller tree, um, and that lives a little bit longer. The dwarf trees need to have some trellising, or like a stake, or some wires to hold them up, like tomatoes do. But the taller trees don't need that support; they can just grow on their own. Um, there's pros and cons to both options. Um, it kind of depends on what you your design your orchard. So if you look at all these trees and think about where they're going to go, um, some of these are going to go to an orchard down on Smith Hatchery Road at Cultivate Co. Uh, some good friends of mine uh, and I are collaborating to put in an orchard down there. Uh, if you go down to Cooper's Landing, you'll see it off to the side. Um, some of these are gonna be in a cider orchard for Waves and Logboat. Logboat opened a cider company called Waves. So a bunch of these over here are on Geneva 890. Those will be grafted this summer. Um, this is a, looks a little different. This is a rootstock that I bought uh, from Cummins Nursery out of New York. And so it's just like the rootstocks across the street, but it came propagated for out of their nursery. 
It's very consistent. You see, all of these are the exact same size. And I'll come in in the spring or in the summer, right about there, and I'll slip a little bud under there, put some rubber bands, and then I'll come back next spring and I will cut that off. That little bud will grow up to about here by the end of the season. And then the next year, I'll dig that and move it. So it's kind of a two year crop to, to produce and get out there. So it takes a lot of patience and a lot of note taking to make sure you know what is what. So I have a map that details exactly what's planted where um, so I don't get confused and mislabel the tree. Because if you do that, you'll, it'll take many years to find out that this fruit you think is a gala is really a Fuji or something like that. And so it's better to know up front what, what things are. Um, let's look up at the front. I'll show you an, another stool bed. So this is a different type of stool bed. These trees are much taller. This is a M111, which is a, a very tall rootstock. It's a semi-standard. This tree was, it will get maybe 20, 30 feet tall. Um, and so it's the same process. I'm, I'll hill up around these sprouts and next spring I'll move them out into a nursery and graft them. So these don't produce the apples, but this is the rootstock that determines the height. So this is a M111. Here's a different one that sends up a lot of different sprouts. This is an M9. So this is a, a medium sized tree. Whereas the M111 is tall, this is a medium size or a semi dwarf. And then here's the start of a Geneva 11 dwarf rootstock stool bed. So these, like, like the Mark, will produce a dwarf tree that's only about eight feet tall, uh, which is really convenient for picking. So, speaking of, let's, let's run back across the street, back over to the house that. We call the roadhouse is the original PCUA office. Oh, hold on, we'll one more shot. Here's our grapevine. This is a front neck grapevine. And come look at these baby grapes. These baby grapes just started emerging a few weeks ago, and these are going to grow into a big purple cluster, maybe about that big. I've not done any thinning or pruning yet, um, but will because this is too. There's too many sprouts, and the grapes like a lot of airflow. Otherwise, they get diseases around them. Um, in fact, a lot of little baby grapes, they don't taste good now, but over time they'll grow up and be delicious. So, in big apple orchards, big commercial orchards, um, they produce fruits with, by grafting them in a nursery and then they transplant them out. In your backyard, um, you have a lot of options. It's, if you buy yours from Stark Brothers or other places, it's the same process. Someone grafted that tree grew it out in a nursery for a year or two, labeled it really well, and they sent it to you. Um, it's possible, some people have seen, they call them fruit cocktail trees, where they take one root system and they graft a bunch of different varieties onto it. That's a fun way to do it, especially if you have small spaces in your yard. Um, a dwarf tree is also good kind of as, a, as a starter to stay small. This is in our front yard here. This is a blushing golden. We get in here close, you can see <coughs> these fruit are already start. Have already set. They survived. They survived the frosts, and here they are. They're looking really good. They're bulking out already. <coughs> uh, this will be thinned a little bit more through the season. This tree is about six years old, and so you think after six years, you know, we didn't. We got a, last year was a pretty good harvest. We maybe got 20, 30 pounds. Uh, there's the makings of easily 40 pounds of fruit off this one tree. And then behind us here is a peach. And if you look, the rootstock of this peach is a seedling. And so somebody was eating peaches on the front yard, front porch, and threw a peach pit, and it grew. Um, and so this peach, this is second year of the rootstock. I came in and grafted. You can see that graft line really clear. I took the bud of a, a New Haven peach and slipped it under the bark right there and then these two sprouts have come up. And so this is um, two years growth and look there's peaches on it already. 
There's a peach. And so then this, all this is new growth, but this peach established on last year's growth here. So there's a bunch of little peaches on here. They've survived the frost. And so we'll keep an eye on these and then come summertime, we'll have fresh peaches in our front yard. The other tree to look at in the front yard is a pawpaw. This tree has been here for a long, long time and produces pawpaws every year. And look at all these flowers. I'll pick one off so you can take a close look at this beautiful purple flower. They kind of smell bad. They, they get pollinated by flies, so it kind of smells a little like, like a little gross, but that really the, fr the flies come in and set fruit really well. If you can take a close look on this, those are baby pawpaws. Those will get big and eventually they'll be about, about that big, a couple inches big. Um, and that they grow in little clusters. They look like little cluster of bananas. Uh, so these are custard apples, what they get called. Here's some more. Look at all those little baby pawpaws. Those will get, those will grow throughout the season. And with how much fruit, and how many flowers are on there, it looks like we're gonna have more rounds of fruit get pollinated uh, and established. And so yeah, pawpaw is a delicious fruit. I like to pick them after they fall, push that flesh through a colander, and then take all that that goo, mix it with vanilla ice cream, and put it in the freezer. Because uh, then it's shelf stable and it's delicious. Because who doesn't love vanilla ice cream? So that's our quick tour for today. Um, if there's any questions out there, text them and put them in the comments, and we'll we'll try to answer them here. Um, I hope you enjoyed the tour today. Learn a little bit about fruit trees, rootstock, grafting, different varieties. Uh, and if it's interest, maybe we can do another tour. I appreciate Clint for letting me um, host a tour during Veg Out today. Uh, and if this sparked some curiosity, send some, put your questions in there, and we'll try to answer them in, in a future video. So, thanks everybody. All right, thanks for tuning in today, everybody, and thanks, uh, thanks to Adam for showing us his little nursery system. That's all we've got for you today, but we'll be back with you tomorrow for another Veg Out video.